get into the content of the video today, I just want to share with you a couple of important notes. The purpose of the Online Etymology Dictionary, much like any etymology resource, is to share the history or the story of the word, which includes how it may have changed over time. In the entry, we are going to see which affixes, prefixes and suffixes, are involved in the building of the word. This particular website does not provide complete word sums in order to show you how the word is built. There might be times where you're wondering how we get from point A to point B as we look at the different words in the entry. This website assumes that you have a working understanding of some elements of morphology. Please note that those of us that have uh, a greater understanding of morphology still stumble upon entries that are confusing or that leave us with more questions. Part of this work is not necessarily finding the answer, but be willing to be curious in order to dig in further to see what we can discover about words and why they're spelled the way they are. Let's look at how to read an Edom Online entry. When you get to the Edom Online website, you will notice a search bar at the top of the page. Of course, this is where we would search the word that we're wanting to research. You will also notice that just like any dictionary, you can also choose to peruse through the letters of the alphabet. And then you're going to notice several um, blog posts from the developer of the website, uh, Doug Harper, as well as an explanation about what the online etymology dictionary is and isn't. If you have not um, spent time on this website before, I highly recommend that you check out the introduction and explanation in the about section. It allows you to understand some of the terms that Doug uses on the website some abbreviations uh, and things like that. It's just something to keep in mind um, as you're perusing the different posts or entries. Um, this is an ongoing project um, and development. So it's possible that what you see at one point will have changed or been updated at another point. Um, so keep that in mind as you're looking at the website. Once you've searched a term or a word, you're going to come across an entry. And I want to walk you through the parts that you're going to see when you look at the entry, um, because it might not make a lot of sense when you first start working with this website. So the very first thing to point out is that at the top of the entry is the header, and it's going to mention what the word is, what part of speech it belongs to. And you might also see with some words, a number beside it. And if you see a number, it means there's more than one definition or use of that particular word. So it's possible that you would have to look through a number of entries before you find the one that you're looking for. The next thing that you're going to see is a date. Um, and this date is when it was first attested or used in written English. Following that, if the word was spelt differently, you will see the original uh, spelling and you will also see um, a definition in quotation marks. Now the definition that you see might not be how we currently see or make use of the word uh, because of course words change over time. After that point, he starts with the most recent to the most historic. And so these are the, we can think of an etymon as a written ancestor of the word. And typically it has a spelling that's very close to its descendants. So you're going to see patterns showing up as you read through the entry. This particular word has a history in French and Old French, and then we go down into vulgar Latin, which just is the Latin of the common people. If applicable, um, it will go into further details of where it may have come from in Latin. 
If the word comes from Latin, it'll often include information about how this particular word is formed. We can see here that this word effort is made from the prefix ex. This is an example of an assimilated prefix. And the Latin word fortis, meaning strong. You will also notice here that there are some bolded words and those ones happen to be linked. If you ever get the chance to listen to Doug talk about this website, he will let you know that he doesn't put links in unnecessarily. And so you follow the links to help build out the story of the word. Once you start following the links, sometimes you discover other words that, that would be part of the family. Uh, it just helps paint the, the story or the picture of the word as you start to dig into the links. The last thing I want to point out around these Adam Online entries is when you see, when you come across PI root, and PI stands for Proto Indo European, this is hypothesized and not actually recorded in written text. When you see a little asterisk next to any sort of an entry in in this website, in morphology work, it means that it's it's hypothesized. It is not solid. It can also tell you that maybe there's an error here. Essentially, what we need to remember is there's no pie, no pie for you uh, when we're reading these. So once you get to the point of the pie root, back up. We don't read any further into the pie root because it is not recorded and is simply hypothesized. At this point, the key to success in using this website is practice. The more times you're on and the more entries you read, the more time you will spend becoming familiar with how um, entries are written and the way that things are linked and interconnected.